Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, this is the first video in a three-part video series walking you through making your own demo boards for the 18F4550 and programming the 18F4550. Uh, this video series is ideal for you if you've worked with uh, other microcontrollers before, maybe Atmel, RhinoSS, etc., or something similar like an Arduino board, and you'd like to learn to work with microchip picks. Or if you've worked with electronics before or otherwise and would like to begin using microcontrollers, or if you've written desktop software and you'd like to start writing embedded software and working with circuits, or even if you haven't worked with electronics at all before but you'd like to jump into the deep end and learn to work with microcontrollers first which is a great place to start. Uh, in this last case especially you might have to refer to some of the other sources I'll mention throughout the video. Uh, so for the first video what we're going to do is we're going to get a lead blinking with the simplest possible circuit that we can use for the 18F4550. In the second video we're going to add to that circuit both analog and digital input and then in the third video we're going to demonstrate the USB capabilities of the 18F4550. Uh, throughout any of these videos, uh, please check my website, www.18f4550.com. I'm going to have diagrams, uh, pictures, parts lists, etc. all up there for you. You can download them, print them out. Hopefully that will be helpful. Also, my YouTube channel is uh, 18F4550 videos. So, what is the 18F4550? The 18F4550 is a great microcontroller made by Microchip. You can see their website, www.microchip.com. Uh, the full name is the PIC 18F4550. Usually I omit the PIC part and just say 18F4550. Um, a microcontroller, for those uh, who don't know, is uh, you could roughly think of a microcontroller as something equivalent in processing power and memory to a desktop computer of a generation ago, perhaps 25 to 30 years ago, but it's on a single chip. So, for example, this here is a picture of the 40-pin through-hole version of the 18F4550 that we'll be working with. So why is the 18F4550 so great? Well, there's lots of reasons. It has 40 pins, at least the, the version that we'll be working with does, uh, 32K of flash program memory, 2048 bytes of SRAM data memory. Uh, the clock can go up to 48 megahertz with an external oscillator, which is blazingly fast for a microcontroller. And it also has uh, internal circuitry to assist you with all the following, although you still have to write the firmware. Uh, analog to digital conversion, pulse width modulation, voltage comparison, interrupts, and timers, and the big kahuna USB. In fact, if you do an internet search on 18F4550, the very first thing that comes up after 18F4550 itself is 18F4550 USB. So if you're doing a project, you want to add USB to it, 18F4550 is probably your best bet. Also, it does USR communication, I2C, SPI. I could go on and on, but rather than do that, let's dive in and get started. So let's get a lead blanking. To do that, here's the steps involved. We're going to need to start with our parts list, and then we're going to have a circuit diagram, then we're going to breadboard our circuit, and then we're going to write a program to load into the 18F4550. Then we're going to load that program into the 18 and test it, and then to have something more permanent, we're going to perfboard our circuit. So let's get to that. So here we have our Blink Demo Board's parts list. Uh, if you like, you could go to www.18F4550.com for a printable version of this parts list. So for each part, I've listed the name, uh, description, a suggested supplier and matching supplier's part number. And for most of these parts, you could go with an equivalent from a supplier of your choice or use what you already have on hand if you prefer. But for these first two parts, especially the 18F4550 and the PICKIT 2 or the PICKIT 3, I would definitely recommend getting those from Microchip Direct. That's Microchip's direct sell site for their products. The address is www.microchipdirect.com. Let's take a quick look at that. So if we go to www dot microchipdirect.com and here's our opening window here so we type in 18F4550 and the second choice here pick 18F4550 that's what we're looking for and the next page is going to bring up multiple versions of the 18F4550 which varies on things such as package type so let's take a look at that package type PDIP that means plastic dual inline package in other words the through hole version and 40 is the pin count. So that's a 40 pin through hole part. Uh, some of the other packages that are available are QFN and TQFP. Those are surface mount chips, which we're not going to get into at the moment. So we'll filter on package type PDIP, and that will get us down, I believe, to uh, two different chips. And there we are, a PIC 18F4550 IP and PIC 18LF4550 IP. Now the, the L is short for low power. So this particular version of the 18F4550 you could use with less than 5 volts, but we'd probably best not get into that. Let's stick with the good old traditional through-hole part 40-pin 5-volt version of the 18F4550, and that's this one here. 
uh, then we've got to choose our quantity. I'd recommend you get at least three, four, or five would be better. You're definitely going to want to have some extra chips on hand because you're going to have multiple projects going and so on. So once we have our chips, the next thing we have to do is decide to get the Pit Kit 2 or the Pit Kit 3. So let's take a quick look at the comparison of the two. The Pit Kit 2 and the Pit Kit 3 are the programmers for uh, microchip picks. Uh, the Pit Kit 2 is uh, more user friendly, whereas the Pit Kit 3 uh, is more sensitive to not harming lower voltage chips, and I'll explain the difference. The Pit Kit 2, uh, when you connect it to a circuit that has a microchip uh, pick in it, it attempts to auto detect it, and to, to do that auto detection process, the Pit Kit 2 has to apply a voltage to the board. In doing so, if you connect the Pit Kit 2 to a circuit that has a low voltage chip, the auto detect voltage the Pit Kit 2 applies might harm the chip. The Pit Kit 3 which is newer and intended to work with the newer 3.3 volt chips is much more friendly to not harming 3.3 volt chips but as goes along with that the auto detect process is not as complete so it's really not as user friendly to use the Pit Kit 3. Uh, some other differences are the Pit Kit 2 is $35 whereas the Pit Kit 3 is $45. Uh, the Pit Kit 2 is older uh, so it's more refined but it might not be supported as long into the future whereas the Pit Kit 3 uh, is newer and is going to be supported longer. Uh, also the Pit Kit 2 uh, programs most picks including the 18F4550 whereas the Pit Kit 3 uh, microchip states will program all picks. So if we go to www.microchipdirect.com we should be able to find the Pit Kit 2 and Pit Kit 3 pretty easily. Uh, when we type in Pit Kit 2, there we go, Pit Kit 2 Microcontroller Programmer. I'll open that in a separate window. And then also the Pit Kit 3. Uh, also when you do a search on these um, Pick it 2 and Pick it 3, you'll see these packages that Microchip offers where they'll uh, include a demo board with it for a relatively small additional cost. Uh, the Microchip demo boards are great. I have a few of them, but really you're going to learn the most about working with, with the 18F4550 and constructing circuits for it if you make your own demo board. Personally, that's what I would suggest. But if you want an option where you don't have to do any soldering at all and you can start writing software immediately, these kits are something to consider. So here's our Pit Kit 3, 45 bucks, and then the Pit Kit 2 is 35 bucks. So you could choose either based on your preference. Uh, also, it'd be a good idea to watch through the rest of this video series, and then you can see the process of programming the 18F4550 with the Pit Kit 2 and 3, and decide which one you prefer at that time. So uh, referring back to our parts list. The, once we've gotten the rest of our parts also from either my suggested supplier or a supplier of your preference, then we're ready to consider our circuit diagram. So here's our circuit diagram for our blink demo board. But before we consider our diagram, let's first get the 18F4550 data sheet. So if we go to an internet search, uh, 18F4550 data sheet. And let's choose the first option. That'll take us to the microchip page with the 18F4550. Uh, here you notice it lists uh, specs and so on. We're going to look for the section data sheets. Uh, right click on that and save target as and save the data sheet for the 18F4550 to somewhere very convenient such as your desktop because you're going to refer to it often. I already cheated and downloaded it ahead of time. And it's going to take a moment to open because it's a big document over 400 pages. So you're not going to want to print the whole thing out at 438 pages. However, uh, you're definitely going to want to print some parts of it out. Now you'll notice there's a nice table of contents here. Uh, one of the really strong parts about using microchip products is that the documentation for their chips is excellent. It gets into all types of different uh, the features the chip has and provides nice diagrams and explanations and everything. Uh, one page you definitely will want to print out pretty much immediately is page 4 because that's the pinout for it. So here's the particular uh, chip and package that we're using, 40-pin PDIP package. Uh, try not to get confused with um, some of the other chips that are mentioned in the same data sheet. It's the same data sheet for the 2455, 24, 
25, 50, 44, 55, and 45, 50. Uh, of course, we're really only concerned with the last of these. Uh, the other chips have either less memory or fewer pins. At the bottom of page 3, there's a, a comparison of the four different chips mentioned in this document. But anyhow, what you want to do is print out page 4 and focus on this part here because that's what we're going to be using. So starting with this pinout, which I basically just reproduced. Reproduced here, and then the rest of the circuit. So for each of these pins, uh, they're labeled all these different fancy looking things. Try not to get too intimidated by that if you haven't worked with microcontrollers before. For example, pin 33 is a RB0, AN12, INT0, FLT0, SDI, and SDA, depending on how you have the chip configured. We'll get to how to configure it in software later on. But anyhow, the idea is that there's so many functions that this chip could do. If each one of these was on a separate pin, the chip would be hundreds of pins and it would be unmanageable. So microchip has combined the functionality of all these various different things that can be done with multiple functions on one pin. So without getting into all these in detail, what we want to look at overall is for basic input-output, we want to look at our ports. And those are ports uh, RA, RB, RC, RD, and RE. Now each port has multiple pins. For example, port B has pins RB0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So in our case, we're going to have four LEDs that we're going to blink. And to make it easy on ourselves to keep track of it, we'll simply connect LEDs 0, 1, 2, and 3 to RB0, 1, 2, and 3, which are pins 33, 34, 35, and 36 on the chip. Of course, we need a resistor in series with those LEDs to limit our current. Also, we need to provide power. There's a power pin on both sides of the 18F4550, pin 32 and pin 11. Those both go to plus 5 volts. Now, when I have plus 5 volts on this diagram, that doesn't mean a separate power supply, which I mentioned in the notes up here. There's only three things that go to power. Also, the programming connector, I'll get to that in a minute. But the plus 5 volts means connect that to your power bus, and then when we're actually testing the circuit, the programmer will provide power to the circuit for us. So no external power supply is needed. So continuing on here, uh, there's two grounds on the 18F4550, pin 31 and pin 12. And then we also want to add a smoothing cap from pin 11 to ground, or alternatively you could place that on pin 32 to ground to provide a stable voltage for the chip. So other than the parts already mentioned, LEDs, smoothing cap, powers and grounds, the only remaining part here is this uh, programming connector. So the uh, pins on the picket 2 or 3 there's, it's going to be a six pin device, um, so that's why I've illustrated the six pins here. Uh, the first pin is the programming voltage, and I'll use white in my diagrams for that. You could choose whichever colors you like, though, but I, I prefer white, red, black, green, and yellow for these uh, five pins. The sixth pin is an auxiliary pin that's, that's really only there for historical reasons. Uh, we won't be using that pin, you can just leave that unconnected. But anyhow, uh, the first pin uh, is the programming voltage pin. And what the PICKIT 2 or 3 does when it's putting the 18F4550 into programming mode is it turns this on at a, a substantially higher than 5 volts uh, voltage to make the chip enter programming mode. Uh, pin 2 and 3 are just regular old power and ground. And pin 4 and 5 are our programming data and our programming clock. And of course you'll notice those match PGD and PGC on the chip. Now, one thing with these lines here is that when you're breadboarding or perfboarding your circuits, uh, these are a sensitive digital signal. You want to keep these lines as short as possible, like half a foot or less. Uh, really, the shorter the better. And pretty much all the circuit diagrams that I'll do with the 18F4550, I almost always put the programming header right here to keep these lines absolutely as short as possible. So now that we've considered our circuit diagram, we're ready to breadboard it.